you, Margaret, for the introduction, and good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming. I'm honored to be here. All right, so um, this presentation today, um, I'm going to talk about my research, which is, which is part of the bigger project, okay? But this one, I'm just going to focus on students' um, pre-service teachers' um, voices regarding the communicative practices within the classroom. Okay, so the topic is on the intercultural communicative, communicative practices in science teacher education um, in the classroom context and voices of pre-service on um, science teacher. Um, anybody here uh, do teach the pre-service students? Anyone? No? Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Someone did. Great. And lovely to meet them last night for, at the dinner as well. Okay. So um, the aim of the study, I like to explore their voices regarding their um, communication with the Filipino teachers, okay? Because um, the, the, I must say the Filipino teachers are quite, uh, you know, play important role in, in, in Thai higher education just recently. Because of the, you know, English is a lingua franca for the ASEAN, um, you know, working language. Everybody knows that since 2015, um, Thailand and the other uh, nine countries have united and started to um, you know, work collab collaboratively within the region and that English was chosen to be uh, our lingua franca for the working. And again, with that uh, integration, there's an MOU between, you know, within the AEC that the uh, mobilities of the teachers, you know, or any other skilled laborers can actually migrate within the region. And that, I must say, um, a lot of Filipino teachers are uh, coming to Thailand at different levels, like high school, primary, high school, and university, and they have been really doing really well. And my research actually has started uh, doing research with a Filipino teacher when I just finished my PhD in 2009, and that was in high school. And I thought it's quite interesting. And just recently, I have a lot of Filipino students and you know, uh, teachers and friends and colleagues. Okay, and. There's a high demand of the um, native English lectures in Thai higher education due to internationalization. As you know, a lot of universities in Thailand actually hire a lot of international teachers because they believe that these international teachers could you know, provide the exposure of English, real English, to Thai students. Because of working in ASEAN, they must be, a Thai students, Thai graduate students must be able to be equipped with the understanding, intelligibility, communication with these, um, you know, future uh, workforce, okay? However, there's also a high demand of non-native English speakers as well. The, these professionals, especially Filipino, have increasingly gained an equally significant role of English language education. Uh, in Thai context. This is by Ola in 2019. And he also said that one of the Asian Englishes that has been more you know, dominant is Filipino English due to increasing numbers of non-native English speakers, as I have mentioned. And that has changed the sociolinguistic landscape um, in Thai universities. And you can see that not um, generally a lot of universities would hire um, Filipino teachers. Based on my study formally with the uh, high school, you know the reason why we hire a lot of Filipino teachers? Any Filipino uh, fellows? Do you know why? <laughs> because they speak English. First of all, they speak English very well. Not only speak English, but very well compared to Thai, I must say. Okay. Secondly, they're motivated. Yeah. The look. The look. You look like us. <laughs> the behaviors, teaching and learning style. Filipino teachers tend to understand Asian learners or Thai students more than Western counterparts. In terms of working ethics and everything, you're the, because, because we are Asian, right? I mean, this is, could be generalized. However, from the research, um, school principals say that the Filipino teachers tend to be able to accommodate the needs of schools. Somehow, you know, we can work long hours, you know, doing other activities, extracurricular activities, and all Filipinos love joining that, especially <laughs> singing karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're like, you know, we share kind of common cultural background in some way, and that has helped. And in addition to that, it's about salary. 
because of the yeah the salary is um, I must say that's quite different with the native and Filipino. Yeah. However, Filipino teachers are happy with that. Really, um, this is so from from the research I've done. Okay. So the higher education play a vital role in equipping university students with effective cognitive. Um, behavioral competencies by recognizing interactions with other ASEAN people and uh, students' language proficiency into cultural communication. Um, you can see that within university uh, context, I'm from Mahito University, right? And there are other you know, leading universities in Thailand, Tulalongga, and uh, Mahito University, or Tamasa University. They often hire native speakers because that is quite um, you know, the place where uh, Native people would go. However, in certain uh, other universities, they would hire also Filipino teachers around Thailand. Okay, and that um, being able to understand the non-native English varieties are quite important. A lot of people, a lot of Thai students, when they graduate and then when they work in the workplace, generally they would meet up with non-native speakers more than actually native speakers. Yeah, they would be exposed to that more. So Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation, or we call it MAHESI, or M-H-E-R-S-I, attempts to enhance the, the need for Thai undergraduate students to possess the combination of intercultural knowledge, skills, attitudes, and critical cultural awareness um, to communication with people, including native English speakers and non-native English speakers, okay, from different cultural backgrounds. And just the reason I mentioned this because you know, in Thailand, just recently, we have separated with, between the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Higher Education. Before that, Ministry of Education was under <coughs> Ministry of Education. But because of the working and the direction of the country, we separate this uh, higher education into a different ministry. Okay? And that we can actually focus on the, um, you know, innovation, science, and things like that. Maybe like in Japan, they got like Ministry of uh, Education and Science like mix, right, in mix, okay? Um, another thing is that there's also a link between Ministry of Education and higher education. Ministry of Education, the curriculum, actually state that students should be exposed to native speakers. So the ideology of learning with native speakers are quite dominant, and that also maintained within the higher education. However, as English become a lingua franca, people must be able to meet not only with native speakers and also other non-native, right? And these ideas actually have been embedded within the um, you know, Thai teachers and students for a long, long time. Based on my study within, uh, when I did my PhD in England, one of the reasons that Thai students actually feel really awkward or shy to speak English because of our linguistic mm -hmm. ideologies. We still think that Thai English is not good enough. Our English is not good enough. I cannot actually communicate with native speakers. However, when they speak with other non-native speakers like Chinese, uh, Japanese, you know, Thai students were quite good. They felt actually quite confident speaking with these non-native speakers. But once they started to, you know, talk with non-native or, I'm uh, uh, sorry, with the native, they feel that that English wasn't good enough to be delivered, so they kept themselves quiet, okay? So the cultural awareness and the need to incorporate into the cultural communication um, into the academic programs are quite important because it helps to enable these young learners, okay, to or young graduates to meet the high demand of the workforce in the future, which is quite multilingual, multicultural context. And that becomes the, uh, my research gap here that the, um, a lot of studies explore Filipino teachers in different contexts and also Thailand's attitudes toward English and other non-native English speakers. Yet, um, in terms of the subject matter, in terms of language teacher education, this is still quite you know, lacking in, in our context in Thailand. So for those of you who would like to do research regarding this area, there's still plenty of room you know, for those who would be interested in learning more about the pre-service teachers. The reason I think pre-service teachers is, um, is research is important because they are the role model of students. If you can train these pre-service teachers or equip them with, with a positive mindset regarding the language, they can help other students or their own students you know, to have a better ideas 
and better equipped with a good, better mindset, I would say. Okay. Otherwise, we cannot escape these ideas of native speaker norm. Yeah. So now let's talk about the Intercultural Communicative Competence, or ICC. The ICC is the ability for individuals to uh, have knowledge, skills of discovery, interaction, interpretation, attitudes, and critical cultural awareness to understand their own culture and other cultures, okay, in terms of uh, once they uh, communicate with, this, with each other. And there's a model that by Byron 2009 is a very famous model in terms of ICC is a combination between communicative competence and intercultural competence. So communicative competence includes uh, linguistic competence, the social linguistic competence and discourse competence, okay, abilities to understand the language itself. And the other one is the um, intercultural competitive competence in which you need to, um, in terms of attitudes, skills, knowledge, okay, of interpreting and relating. What do people mean by that? Okay, because in communication is both verbal and nonverbal. But can you guess, in, um, in communication, what's the percentage of the verbal and nonverbal? To what extent that we normally use words or non-words? What do you think? In your, maybe like in this conference, this is a good example. Do we speak more or we speak less? Exactly. Silence speak out louder than words. Yeah. So a lot of times, I mean, students often think that they should be able to speak. When we learn, when we, when we as teachers, we look. I mean, we expect our students to speak, but actually, if they know when and how to speak, that actually means a lot. Okay. So uh, the ability to speak has to link with the context as well. Okay and the skills of discovery and interaction. Okay, so um, a, lot of, a lot of times, you know, we tend to, I mean, interpret people from the standpoint of our, you know, our background, right? Maybe we look in the media, films, and things that we thought those people behave such and such. I say, that for example, in Chinese, for example, I just got back from China. A lot of Thai people, when they look, think of Chinese in Thailand, just a total, Opposites from what we have seen them in Thailand. Yep. Yeah, actually, um, you know, for Chinese, uh, in Thailand generally we perceive them as quite loud and, you know, not behaving nicely as and such and such. But when I went to uh, Shanghai, all the Chinese, they are quite actually well behaved. <laughs> they're very good. I mean, they, 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 they learn, I mean, they, they have, because somehow as the Chinese tourists in Thailand, you can observe them, their behaviors differently. But when I'm there, everything is fine, really. Um, yeah, the people are really nice. Yeah. And the uh, critical cultural awareness, you know, to what extent that we can interpret the, um, the behaviors and we need to interact with the people. You know. I think this is important. We cannot actually judge them by looking from the outside. Learning, starting talking with them is quite important. Okay, so um, I would encourage everybody actually to mingle and talk and interact and that you can become more, you know, uh, familiar with one another and learn from one another. So now perceptions of native English speakers and non-native English speakers distinction in various contexts. And again, I mean, previous studies on English language uh, as a foreign language demonstrates that students prefer native English speaking um, teachers more than non-native, of course, especially British and American um, teachers because of, as again, as I have mentioned, our curriculum emphasized native English speakers. So all the books, all the media, everything, we try to portray the native English speakers as the dominant kind of discourse within our English language education. However, you know, just recently, I mean, scholars, the Thai scholars starting to recognize that um, there are other non-native English speakers. So, and a lot of materials nowadays have developed based on the non-native model, okay? So, and that will help more with understanding um, and in terms of ownership of English, okay? Do you, are you familiar with the kachus, the three circles? Three circles of English? You've got inner circle, outer circle, and expanding circle. Main, I think Thai 
in Thailand, English language education, we should also teach about that to, to pre-service English teachers. Because we, we thought, we always think that the inner circle is the one that we should follow. And that we, as Thai, tend to not feeling proud of our Thai English. But nowadays, Asian Englishes have started to pick up um, its significance, right? So everyone started using our own English. We should be proud of our own English. Okay, and we should be able to tell this to our students. Okay. Students find such accents desirable in the native speaker's accent, desirable compared to those the uh, non-native English counterparts, speaking, pronunciation, and listening. But again, communication is not about accent. Thai, I think Thai people are still confused with what it means by pronunciation and accent. We thought having good accent means good content. A lot of people speak with, I want to have a British accent, I want to have. When I did my master's, I remember we asked our teachers, uh, can we actually acquire native speaker accent? And my professor said, um, hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we are old. I mean, we're adult learners. Adult learn, you know what good age for uh, acquiring a line, uh, an, an, an accent? based on the critical period hypothesis. Two? Wow. <laughs> age four. <laughs> From five to twelve or before puberty. Yeah, before puberty. That was her natural acquisition of accent. The rest need to work. They need to work really hard. I went to the States when I was 17. It took me a while. And I you know, went around the world. So I pick up little bit of things around. So eventually, if someone asked me what accent I adopted, I thought I, I would say Kenny's English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I can't actually. You see, sometimes they say I can't, I can't, you know, just depends. Yeah. So we can argue that the Asian non-native English lecturers not only have to prove themselves to undergrad, to Thai undergrad students that uh, they are proficient in teaching English and also academic content in English, but also need to gain legitimacy, okay? That's normally accorded with native English speakers, brought about by the people's notions of being legitimate, okay? Based on their English la uh, language and also their whiteness. Yes. I. When I started to um, being a teacher, I mean, I did uh, my master's and I wanted a job, okay, and I applied for teaching in children's school. This is real, okay, this is a very true story. And the ad said, native speaker needed. I want a job, I wanted a job. So I called and I spoke in English. I said, hi, I need a job. <laughs> I said, okay, come and you know, apply for a job. I said, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm Thai. Oh, you sound, you sound familiar enough. You sound native enough. Yeah, so I, I went there and I got a job. And I thought, this is interesting. So it, if I can actually pretend or sound American, I could get a job. So, um, and that I thought somehow, you know, hiring, this is also dealing with hiring or recruitment policies of language school. Um, a lot of time, I mean, as even nowadays, there are saying like native speaker wanted, right? America, Australia, New Zealand, uh, England, whatever. Without considering um, this, and that I will talk more in terms of why I chose this institute, you know, to do research. Very interesting. So you see, and also the look. You know, Khao San Road in Thailand. Anybody been to Khao San Road? Very famous. A lot of time, people people make a, a joke. If you don't have a visa, you can go to Khao San Road and yeah, just take pictures and whatever and then wherever. You, people can from Khao San Road, the tourists can go to school. I mean, being a teacher, just wearing a shirt, necktie, and go to uh, be a teacher. As a tourist, tourists can turn to be a teacher by just changing the look and you can be a teacher because you can speak, you, because you speak English and because of your look, right? But not for us. But for you, because you look like us. <laughs> and parents don't trust. And you sound different, something like that. 
So um, this is by the study by Perez Amura, and she's Filipino. She's my colleague, and then another Thai colleague. Um, they said that although race and linguistic ability are not concerned, are not connected, social perceptions that associate whiteness with idealized native English speakers have detrimental effect effects on non-native English speakers and the teachers of colors, the native speaker, uh, uh, speaking teachers of colors as well. You see, so the perceptions, our perception still based on the native norms, okay? Even our appearance. So the Thai students' um, perceptions of English and varies in, in Thailand. So the Thai pre-service English teachers preferred standard English, as I said, British or American, and had neutral perceptions towards world or global Englishes native English speakers and uh, native English speaking teachers and non-native due to the limited exposure to the other varieties of English. So because of Thai EFL students' attitudes, positive attitudes toward that English accent can influence the social behaviors and language learning, okay? A native-like English pronunciation is not as important as speaking with intelligibility of English as a lingua franca in the diverse linguistic and sociocultural context. And these are something that the teachers must emphasize to our students here. Yeah. So now let's talk about Filipino English, and if you want to add anything, please do. And this is one of the research by the Thai uh, scholars. Although Filipino English was negatively perceived for its intelligibility by English and non-English undergrad students, equipping them with the meta, sociolinguistic, and cultural knowledge through media exposure like TED Talks can not only enhance their intelligibility, um, toward the English varieties, but also enhance that alle to alleviate okay their cultural stereotypes and prejudices okay or biases okay. So Thai undergraduate students exposed to Filipino teachers were likely to have more positive attitude toward Filipino English than those who were not, and thus Filipino English was considered acceptable, being used as a medium of instruction and communication in the academic context in Thailand. And a lot of schools, again, as I mentioned, a lot of Thai schools actually hire a lot of Filipino teachers in schools, as I said, because they're hardworking, they're, they're friendly, they love Thai students too, so, yeah. So now let's talk about research methodology. Um, this is qualitative study, okay, and I did that in one of the language institute. The reason I chose this is because I was the, um, the board member of the advisor to this um, institute for quite some time. And another interesting thing, when they make a recruitment act, they said, we need ASEAN teachers. They didn't say native teachers. I hardly see this, okay? So they, they said, we need ASEAN teachers. And that's why a lot of uh, non-native English speakers applied for jobs there, okay? And it's, um, it's located in one of the Rajapat schools, okay? Rajapat was formerly the teacher's college, but now, it kind of changed its status um, to become more comprehensive university. It has all sorts of uh, faculties, okay? And that, this was done in the 2022. And in this um, university, you know, they also produce graduates with a high quality um, of teaching and learning and equipping them with the academic, um, you know, uh, competence and everything similar to uh, other Thai universities in, in, in Thailand, yeah. So here are the, um, <clears throat> the participants. Oh, I actually uh, recruited um, these uh, 15 uh, teachers from different levels. So um, these biology students, uh, by, uh, general science and math, okay, from different years. And these uh, participants were actually recruited based on the Filipinos' uh, teachers' recommendations because I actually, I interviewed Filipino teachers first and they asked them whether I could actually um, you know, talk with the students about you know what they the students think about them. You know, so and then the study is uh, has been approved by the IRB Ethics uh, Committee Board at Mahidol University. So the data collection, because during that time COVID was still really um, you know uh, bad, and then the, so I employ the online focus group interview with the students, and that can help you know gaining more kind of. Um, that insight through the online interview, and then I record that interview, you know, with the computer and everything, and digitalize and whatever, whatever. And it, I did the thematic analysis, okay, based on that interview transcripts. So the findings, okay, um, here are like three main findings. First of all, Filipino lectures, teaching styles and methods. 
Um, here are the, uh, the transcripts, yeah? Filbert teachers focus on communication rather than correct grammar. Thai lecturers focus on content and examination rather than communication. So you can see that the expectations of the students, okay, and the way that uh, the language institutes uh, kind of require Filipino teachers are more focused on, you know, talking, communication with the students, but in terms of exams, Thai students will do the exam. Okay, Thai students do kind of take control of the grammar points, the exams, and things like that. But people teachers are high to just, you know, focus on communication. And foreign and ASEAN lecturers should focus on communicative purposes rather than grammar, as I have mentioned. Okay. And my lecturer, this is a Filipino lecturer, is well prepared in his teaching. He gives us opportunity to speak, you know, speak up in class, even though we don't use correct grammar. Thai lecturers often scold us. So you can see that the, um, the way of teaching and learning, you know, the nature of teaching and learning in, in Thai university is still, I mean, the Thai teachers do focus on classroom management rather than, you know, communication. Okay. Now we talk about classroom communication. So when the students don't understand the Filipino lecturer, we'll ask students' assistant to interpret what he says to the class. So this is one of the strategies that one of the Filipino teachers used. So that because somehow, you know, you, we must admit that not all Thai students know English. Okay, not all Thai. Not, they are not equipped with abilities to understand English. So that in one particular class, the Filipino teacher or foreign teacher will um, kind of assign one competent student to be the assistant. And that student is very happy. It's kind of, you know, I'm taking control of the, being good friend with the teacher, hopefully get good grades too, and also managing the, 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 the colleagues in the, in the classroom, the peers, right? So one assistant, and that, uh, and that, can, uh, that student can also help to communicate with the rest of the class. Our, um, the student in this, um, program about 30 students in the classroom so you can see that number okay that and, and then this student can help you know uh, facilitate the communication Filipino lecturers always encourage us to speak in English even though they could speak Thai is that interesting to you for, for those who actually teach in Japan we hire I mean usually hire foreign teachers, especially Filipino teachers, to teach English. But by the end of the semester, Filipino teachers speak Thai. <laughs> and students, Thai students, still speak Thai. <laughs> so this is very interesting, I think, uh, things happening. And actually, this also reflects on my experience of being a teacher in the, you know, in the undergrad. We have also hired higher, higher, uh, native speaker. And by the end of the semester, that native speaker could speak Thai, and our students do not be able to speak English <laughs> because eventually they spoke Thai with one another. When you walk past the class, you heard, hmm, "This is English class or Thai class," <laughs> because they all spoke in Thai. Yeah, very, very good too. Actually, um, you know these uh, teachers, they they renew their um, contract every year, and they generally got Thai every year because we don't have teachers. Yeah, so they got Thai every year if they don't do anything bad. <laughs> so they try to avoid speaking Thai with the students that they wanted them to put effort in communicating in English with them. Okay, so you can you can see that uh, you can see there's a very I would say that's a very good rapport between Thai students and their Filipino teachers. Okay, Filipino lectures English accent. I find lecture Filipino lectures English accents familiar and easy to understand. We always get lost when we listen to native English speakers. You know, like they're going into the journey, you know, communications like in a, you know, walking into a journey and they, should, they could get lost when they talk to British or American teachers. And one of them said that actually native speakers should be appropriate for the fourth year students. Because fourth year students, they tend to be more mature, okay? They tend to be ready for the workplace. So they should be exposed to native speakers more. Whereas the um, first, second, and third year, they're still, you know, young and novice, you know, they can just, you know, just doing uh, learning English in like a swimming pool, you know, and then the fourth year should be in the ocean, getting eaten by the sharks, okay. So now the discussion, 
So this study actually illuminates how Filipino lecturers and Thai pre-service teachers engaged, learned, and shared their sort of cultural and linguistic backgrounds. And all parties can co-create a sense of ownership within the classroom, okay? And in this multilingual, multicultural space, oftentimes we think that in Thai, Thailand, it's a monolingual country. Many scholars still think Thailand is a monolingual country, but in fact, we have more than 50 other languages okay, spoken. It also demonstrates a positive impact of Filipino lectures into cultural communicative practices on fostering the student, uh, as I said, lecturer student rapport and cultivating a linguistically and culturally inclusive classroom environment. Another methodology that I would encourage uh, a lot of you know, teachers or non-native, I mean native and non-native teachers would do is to do trans languaging. Because nowadays trans is a new concept as well in, in teaching and learning of, of languages or, or the content courses. And for inclusive education, requires for enhancement of language, teachers' awareness and their role of um, recognizing the benefits of trans languaging, promoting dialogues with the students, what it means by, you know, in the English classroom, it doesn't, ma it doesn't mean that you have to use only English. Right? You can learn other languages within the classroom, other cultures within the classroom. Okay, English is just a medium of communication. Okay, it's not everything. You know. Translanguaging should be regarded as an innovative way and valuable assets for learning, interacting, and constructing identities, elevating hierarchies, upholding social justice, and contesting against monolingual ideologies as carbon practices, interactions, and teaching material are not monopolized by the English solely. So pedagogical translanguaging is the theoretical and instructional approach that aims to improve language and con content competencies okay, by using resources from both teachers, uh, linguistic repertoires, and also learners from linguistic repertoire. Okay? And pedagogical translanguaging is a learner-centered and endorses support and development of all languages used by learners. So as I have mentioned, as actually our Thai learners, they, they can have different linguistic resources or even different other languages, you know. So I think employing or learning other, our learners' languages are quite important as teachers. It, and also it fosters development of meta-linguistic meta awareness by softening the boundaries between languages when learning languages and content. All right, and then the previous studies on Filipino English was not highly regarded by Thai learners due to its unintelligibility. This study actually showed that Filipino lectures were a useful resource, okay, in terms of English language teaching and learning. So eventually, I would call for the paradigm shift of native norm to global English um, norm or non-native norm. Being non-native English speakers from the outer circle this helps actually mediate Filipino lectures meet is a mediator between the inner circle and the expanding circle. Okay, so they help to make things easier within the classroom. So in conclusion, so this study looks at the emerging communicative practices that takes place uh, within the science classroom, and we can see the insights of these uh, pre-service teachers. So they have developed their confidence understanding and competence in intercultural communication by interacting with their lectures and share the cross-cultural practices and raising awareness of varieties of English, especially non-native English speakers. They can also foresee their future career okay, as a teacher that they will be exposed to different types of Englishes, um, in, especially maybe in Asia, okay, in the classroom context. So the recommendation is the rise of the English as a global lingua franca class call paradigm shift okay, in the field of the um, ELT in Thailand and hopefully in Asia and uh, refocus on language teacher education in, um, in Asia as well. So and that is the end of my talk and this talk has been funded by the Major University uh, Grants, okay, we call MU uh, Talent Program and this is the full paper for those who would like to read further and this is the references and my contact. So thank you very much. Um, so thank you. Do we have time for Q&A? Maybe about three minutes. Sure. Any, yes, sir.